Test, 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 test. It's Monday morning. No, it's Friday. Friday, Friday. Oh, no, that's the test. Uh, you failed it. <laughs> like, oh, test, I didn't pass it. Quite Damn. literally, the test was just say the day. Say the and, correct And, and you, you done goof. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's whatever day it is, the 24th, 2023. We're doing some weird things here in just a minute. It's, it's payday. That's what it is. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> it is next week. Uh, for, for, for you. Oh. But I'm well. the guy who's paying you, so for me, it's payday means the day I have to pay people. You pay money, <laughs> yeah, to people, yeah. You know, the, the alternate version of payday. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. The other Te one that everyone uses. Basically the, sa the same verb. They should but... call it paid day for everybody who gets a check. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, we should change our What's word. the deal with payday? Oh, no. I'm not paying. <laughs> they should you make the paycheck out of the bank. God, the... Those are that that parody hack or in the style of that's that's some good chat GPT. What's the deal? There's a a channel that I was turned on to today that is just even the host, the streamer who would normally be streaming on his channel, he has an AI of himself mm. that the chat asks questions. He I guess copies and pastes it in, so it looks like his face is saying it's like not photo perfect but right uh for various different uh celebrities and streamers and so they are asking questions and so there was one of uh aoc was very popular bill burr was very popular a bunch of other coffeezilla like like youtubers and streamers and stuff mm. but somebody asked ai aoc ai the ai aoc was fiery like she was very, very. So well, what a what a surprise! <laughs> I wonder what they what the inputs were. Yeah, uh, and uh, they asked if it's okay to be white. She very enthusiastically said, uh, "No." In many words, no. <laughs> many, many words, no. But that's, right. Uh, it that's was, right. It was good fun. It was good fun. Good old fun. Hi, everybody. We're gonna do some weird things here. Hey, you guys hey. feeling weirdy? I am. Yeah. Uh, I felt so weird. I read an article about things. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Related wow. To, to what? To, uh, oh. uh, my yeah. lie is down. Oh, okay. You got a and license to sell hot dogs? I need to announce that one. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. <laughs> really? That's my yeah, favorite that's one. Got some chili yeah. cheese? Yeah. Uh, chili cheese on my hog. Okay. <laughs> How about yeah. this one? Yo, your dick is small. <laughs> and they're like, what? Like, I just was seeing it because your flies open. Because your flies open. <laughs> hey, what's up with your small dick? <laughs> what's up with your tiny penis? That's a pretty good one, yeah. though, right? Andrew's not here today. <laughs> yeah. Andrew's, so it's going to be a lot Andrew's of Andrew's not on the show today. <laughs> so in case you were wondering. Oh, don't worry. He was going to charm in on this small dick joke. <laughs> Something that he loves to get in on. Oh, and we've got a small ways. dick centric improv. And we've got a ways to go. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. <clears throat> okay, you want to do some more things? Ready, ready. Still, still laughing after all these years. What, a, what an enduring, <laughs> what, what an enduring how friendship. Broken are our brains. <laughs> <laughs> We're, it turns out like uh, uh, we eventually get uploaded to the cloud, and it's like recreate Brian and Justin, and it's just us chuckling like just Beavis laughing. and Butthead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay. All right, let's do the weird thing. First. Let's go. Ready, ready. And three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm your fill-in host today, Bryce Castillo, joined, as always. I'm not even the fill-in host. I'm the permanent. I'm just, this is the way it always is. I was about to say, like, we have one bit. <laughs> one we bit. have one bit, which I is know. to pretend that the missing person yeah. never I was, existed. I accidentally did a professional <laughs> intro. That's yeah. my apology on that one. <laughs> yeah. We got In Justin. your face. That's Justin Robert Young. Hey. And Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, ahoy. Join us here in the stories all about the weird things in the world. Hello, fellas. Yo, hey. what up? What up, fam? Can I describe to you uh, a product? Yeah. Can I, decide, can I describe to you a product? I like products, man. If there's one thing that people who know me know about me is that I love products. Do, do, do we need to put like a tag that says sponsored content on this episode? <laughs> is this SponCon? Not, not Spawn yet. SponCon. I haven't heard that one either. That's a good really? one. You haven't heard SponCon? Yeah, Are you no. on the same internet I am? He's not. I, I, He's, I, not. I, He's not. I, I figured SponCon was just a, a big uh, bunch of people appreciating Todd McFarlane. And you also read it wrong? <laughs> 
No, it's good. No, right. it's good. I like it's a good it. Joke. I mean, it's not spelled the right way, but it's like no. But that was yeah. But no, I got it. it. it was, so there was a pat. I was pile. laughing. Okay. Was I not laughing hard <laughs> enough? Yeah, 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 I was acknowledging yeah, the, the pun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, All good. right. So there is a pat pile. Good. Jiminy Crimini. <laughs> we need Todd. Andrew's McFarland. not here today. <laughs> So there's a, a Brazilian aerof, aerospace manufacturer named uh, Embraer. Uh, em, em, Embraer. Embraer. Yeah. Uh, they they filed a patent application recently. Mm. Uh, here in Brazil uh, or in America? I, I think it's in America. I'm certainly reading about this on. Did they American get website. lost? <laughs> I no, I think this is just where they put it. Oh, okay. Uh, so here's a it's a complex system, but it covers these three um, okay. features. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Part the one. A digital camera that will scan the face of a passenger in a vehicle seat, providing an image of their facial expression. Okay. Oh. How do we feel about this already? Camera, looking at your face. Hmm. Facial expression. So it, I install it in my car. It's not outside? Uh, no. We'll get to that. No, we'll, okay. we'll get to what it is. Hypothetically, it's Southwest Airlines installs them in the back of every single seat and just watches you have a flight and notes when you appear to be enjoying things and when you're not happy with them. Well, and that leads us to part the two, okay. a facial expression analysis tool that can identify the passenger's emotion. Okay, yeah, so if I'm, you know, uh, scrunching my brow and, and frowning, then people might think that I had just eaten a prune. Right. Uh, but if uh, I'm scrunching my, my eyes and I'm frowning, then they might think that I'm sad. Uh, alternately, okay. Southwest Airlines, you know, famously is loose. Uh, like Southwest just catching strays in this segment. <laughs> hey, they <laughs> earned it. No, they earned it. I you mean, don't give them, it, give, give them is, cover. This is an aircraft manufacturer who applied for the patent, so I'm trying to think of yeah. aircraft things. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you know, they, they, they give uh, artistic license to their uh, FAA instructions, yep. and uh, essentially sometimes you, you get a good one where it's a small stand-up comedy set, right? Yeah. Um, they would now have the data on what jokes played, how well, and how people reacted. You know, like, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, something doesn't land, or like, you know, sure. something. AI good. focus testing. Yeah. Gotcha. Sure. Okay. Uh, part the three. Yeah. Mm. Uh, actually, before we get to this. Yeah. What else, What do you think part the three is going to be? How I, do you think? I, well, I, I, number one, I suspect it's something that will uh, not uh, be unpleasant because everything you've said so far. Mm -hmm. uh, as creepy as it sounds, I have to admit, it's functionally the equivalent of telling a flight attendant, hey, do me a favor, just kind of look at everyone's faces and see when they're having a good time and when they're not having a good time. Like, mm -hmm. like that, that's the way I would explain it to a human. So that's walk me through that. So say, say, say the, it picks up something. What does it do? Right. It, uh, it rings a bell or. Uh, well, oh, no, no, no. Like, 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 like. There's uh, a frown <laughs> in the cabin. <laughs> there is a frown in the cabin. <laughs> the, the human version would be, I say something like that. And then a week later, I'm like, how are people enjoying our service? And it's like, you know what? We're doing that one joke that is just not landing. Okay. Um, so customer satisfaction. Right. Survey. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Justin, what so about you? you would know, I mean, especially, you know, Southwest has had a, a pretty rough, you know, year and a half, you know, in terms of customer service. So, and, and it's so specifically because of their uh, out of date, uh, the fact that the way they correct for flights is physically to pick up a phone and make a call to a right. human. Yeah. So their, their whole I mean, thing in, is in, old and outdated. Yeah. In general, if they wanted to get a baseline and then mm -hmm. understand in relatively real time what the the happiness of their uh of their customer base was then hmm. they would be able to test a lot of different ideas like what if you got different kinds of snacks you could a b test like if Correct. we don't do the checks oh, mix okay. and we do do a, a brie plate then people smile more because they got a new thing on, and on, on mm -hmm. top of that we could also begin to track like in general 45 percent of passengers uh fall asleep in the first X number of minutes or whatever. Yeah. Mm, like, 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 mm -hmm. And then you can craft an, an experience that plays to the likely, most likely scenario. For Sleepy everyone. heads? Yeah. They can be like, hey, you little tucker I mean, out I'm bugger. Getting, so, okay, but, so but, that's but, interesting. I don't want to yeah. go off on analysis. Here, but it's yeah. a bit weird that you take Chachi. my drink order and then you come back and I'm all excited because Santa Claus is coming, mm -hmm. but then you hand me some crackers and I'm like, oh, you're just going to do this for everyone. You're going to hand crackers out all the crackers. Okay. Uh, the last time I checked, I placed a drink order. Yeah. 
And, the, and you can't even open no, I mean, them. Like, like, like for, it really do be like that. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, okay. So that's uh, analysis, right? You know, uh, uh, it's customer satisfaction, <laughs> seeing how well people are doing. What about something that's maybe a little more, a little more localized to the plane? What if you had this system? It, uh, it's on a plane. I'll give you that. What if you had a system like this that that did- <laughs> it? I'm tired of these AI facial recognition algorithms. Well, what? Uh, I, I I'm what tempted to plane? immediately go to a security thing because uh, we're in America. Yeah. But 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 I I don't know how common airplane hijackings are anymore. So I don't know that somebody would apply for a mm. patent as a security I, I, thing. I think that you would probably more commonly be looking at this for unruly passengers i'm sure that there are probably a, a, which, which algorithm- has been happening yes recently which which probably is algorithmically trackable you can see probably somebody stewing who's, a little bit before getting riled up yeah and at that point you could cut them off before mm-hmm. uh, uh you can cut them off for drinks you know this what? is precognition like, crap this is oh, the first no, no, off no, no, but no, this no, is no, pre no. this is pre-crime wait what the hell <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were in the middle of talking about know, it you know, haven't know, even told know, us I, what it is i know i know but just but, but you also, invented pre-crime but also uh uh i've 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 had have you had an experience where you were next to somebody who was so miserable there was almost an altercation on a plane with me no, I've certainly been next to people that are upset, and I've been next to people that have argued. I've been near people that have argued a million times, but uh, you know, you, you fly enough, and and eventually you see some stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, no, I, well, I, and in, maybe- in general, I am I am a I am a live and let live kind of guy. Like I am I am asleep immediately, and that is that. Bryce, the third part. Yeah, an interface. That can then offer distressed passengers. What do you think? Crackers. Okay, crackers. Or another drink. Or maybe a form of non-invasive transcranial stimulation. <gasps> wow! <laughs> Pot- is that a hard left? Potentially including electricity-based direct current stimulation, magnetic stimulation, and pulsed ultrasound. So basically, step one, just watch them. Step two, note if they're having a bad time. Step three, Zip. used mind control rays. Wow. Uh, 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 extracranial stimulation can be direct uh, if it's touching you electric uh, or uh, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation is straight up like uh, you ain't even touching those waves. They, 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 they just, their magnets so powerful that target uh, various parts of the brain and be all like, be sad. And then you're like, I'm sad now. Well, uh, th- I will say, uh, uh, transcranial magnetic or current stimulation is an accepted treatment. This is from our friends at The Verge for depression and a potential option for some other mental health conditions. And you can already buy non-invasive devices that provide it for home use. So, all right. So, so number Not one, that dangerous. Number one, we were microwaves. incorrect in our assumption that this would primarily be a customer service or surveillance tool by the airline, because this seems uh, more as an amenity for the. Uh, the passenger, another thing. Oh, to- oh, see, you you you've flown United too much. That's that's why you're you're suddenly looking for the eight dollar upgrade. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, they're going to install these things. I don't think they're going in coach. I think they're going in first class. At which point, it's going to be an interface that it's they can service. say, like, "Would you like to see your face?" Like, and then you're like, "Oh yeah," and then it's like you have sad eyes would you <laughs> oh, like no. to have a happy ray shoot into your brain and you're like uh yeah and a croissant please Boop. <laughs> this photograph that we're looking at this foot this, this drawing. line drawing uh in the application this is the yarl from skyrim it, trying to go to minnesota yes yes <laughs> it's <laughs> deeply disturbing oh. like could you imagine a whole plane of people looking like that uh, like uh you 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 would be you looking look like for you're in a k-hole <laughs> yeah. right god this is awful it's 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 definitely it doesn't sound good well, it doesn't sound like a good idea. Well, I'll say no that. No ideas in the future sound good. Imagine the first time you tried to explain a blood bank to somebody. They're like, what? <laughs> You're going to take my blood and put it in a bank? They're like, this, this is insane. Terrible. Banks are for coins. <laughs>
<laughs> so all the, the, all the goblins are gonna get their fingers in my uh, blood. Exactly, <laughs> blood goblins. Oh. So this was uh, a high school nickname. <laughs> So this was filed back in 2016, but it was granted last year. Uh, we haven't seen anything about it just yet, but I think it, I think it's an interesting idea of like, hey, because people do get nervous, specifically nervous on planes and on flights. If they, if someone could say like, hey, we'll try this thing. It is not more dangerous than anything you would find at the Walgreens right. discount aisle. Uh, would you like to try to do this? And maybe this will help you feel better on takeoff or landing. The uh yeah, it's kind of maybe like a Dramamine kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like I'm not entirely certain whether or not dra Dramamine is a, a placebo or not. Um, I've, I've, I've heard uh, two things. You, you got wristbands that basically just poke your wrist, and they promise that that's the magic spot yeah. that'll calm you down. Oh. Um, uh, uh, I've done the thing where if you, uh, what is it, you rub the meat of your, your thumb meat on your hand, yeah. and what is that? Oh, that, <laughs> oh, never mind. Whoa, gets, what is it? Gets rid of your gag reflex. It stops your gag reflex, I think. <laughs> or it pauses put it, it. Put, put a pin in that. Uh, <laughs> you do your own that's, research that's on that. That's like it's more than a pin. <laughs> that's a whole... St oh, it's so, moving, uh, on. moving on. Andrew's <laughs> not here. <laughs> so Andrew today. <laughs> All right, so that's... <laughs> So, but here's oh my, oh my! <laughs> I, I start, It was. I immediately knew the second I started talking what it actually was. I could. I, there's no lie. Escaping. Lie next time. I know, I know. And then when somebody corrects you in the chat, call him a pervert and call the cops on him. Forward it to Matt Gates. He'll take care of it. Okay, here's a different story for it. <laughs> no, we're sinking into it now. We're so, here now. <laughs> two things to remember. Number one, when you apply for a patent and you're granted a patent, that doesn't mean that it's a good idea or that it'll work. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're just you're, you're, protecting you're, you're the planting tech. a flag, right? Uh, so, so many times, often just to sell it to somebody who would do something with it. Correct, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, second of all, um, the what little I've read about transcranial magnetic stimulation indicates that it is 100% perfectly safe and fine. And if that was the case, then all of a sudden you are fully extracted from the problems of, uh, uh, you know, like, hello, would you like sleeping pills on the flight or whatever? Um, like, let's say, <clears throat> hypothetically, this works and it is totally safe and there appears to be no side effects. Um, would you... Let's, it would be a miracle. In, 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 the <clears throat> in the United version, would you press that button? Would you pay $8 to time travel instantly to the part where the plane lands? Oh, like knockout gas. Yeah. Uh, okay. only, only totally safe and effective and no side effects. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that would actually probably would rule a lot. Yeah, That's I why I sleep. Because well, suddenly I'm, I'm, eight I'm, I'm hours doing, becomes... I'm doing the frontier medicine version of exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. If, if I could... Like go on demand and it would be like out out like that's the only problem about sleeping on a plane and I'm a pretty good plane sleeper is that you're never really asleep it's about a 25 percent simulacrum of actual sleep right but which and is it, why like I'm not doing it so you, I can you wake up periodically to shift your body because the only reason you wake up is because oh this part is in terrible pain now yes now let me lean this way yeah so it's like if I could be fully out then like. A, I would, of course, do it. Yeah, because right now I'm only doing it to make the time go faster. Right, right. I'm not well, doing it because I'm tired. And and the one time when I brought up the example earlier, there was somebody that I was next to uh, who uh, I was uh, – I've, I've learned my lesson. Never try to work on a plane. Never uh, it try to get never anything works. done. Not never only works. will it not go well, will the product not be good, but but the one time I almost got in a fight was, was some, some chick – had learned the lesson of don't try to work on a plane. And so she was uh, having a few and a little bit bored, decided to lean over and start criticizing my webpage that I was making on my website. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, go on. <laughs> were you when building it beautiful this? at this time? Where oh. were you going? And, and what like, website was like, it? She, well, it? It was the, the schwood.com. Uh, this would have been mm. around the revolution rebranding phase in 2009-ish or whatever. Okay, because I'm also gauging how full of piss and vinegar Brian Brushwood is in well, this Well, And, and this you moment. know, when, 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 you know, when I'm trying to shut down, I, I radiate a black hole of empathetic 
negative energy or whatever. And I'm like, I'm just getting this done. I got to do this thing. Empathetic negative energy. <laughs> black hole is, of is it. A, is a, that is an operative phrase. Uh, but uh, but uh, she's suddenly leaning in and being all like, so what's that? And I'm like, I'm, oh. I'm just updating a website. The worst. Right, right. Just wow. chatty. Oh, what's that? Like, what's that? I, what are you I, reading? Honestly, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Get a one, book. One of the Christmas presents that I got was something that I've wanted for a while. And I had, when I was a business traveler, I had gigantic headphones. Not because... I needed gigantic but headphones. But because they, they, they are a press release to everyone around you. Don't talk to me. Yes. Do correct. not talk to me. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, if you talk to me, I'm going to look at you and go, headphones. Right. I'm going to point at the sign. The sign on my head that says, don't. You talk. won't even need to point very close. They're so big. It's like that moment in Rick and Morty was like, red X, red yeah. X. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I am not a gigantic plane talker. Uh but yeah, hey, here's, I, some, I, oh, here's here's we've some. had our moments. Well, we have. I mean, like if I'm flying with other people, that's a different story. I'm not, yeah, basically, plain stranger yeah, talker. When, once once we realize that we're performing. <laughs> well, also, I mean, like we're drunks. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like to drink God, before the boy, plane that, takes that, off and that, during the plane. Like this that, is what that, happens. That flight back from Washington D.C. body was in a. <laughs> oh <Sorry>. God. <laughs> Great relatable. Okay, so yeah. the the other uh, here's a here's a thought experiment on this, right? Yeah. If the i if if uh, let's say it costs the same, uh, let's say it costs a certain amount to go from coast to coast on an airplane, and you yeah. can pay twenty extra dollars to knock out gas yourself, totally safe, no side effects. You you walk on, sit down, get up in 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 New York. Uh, at that point, couldn't you just load everybody into trains <laughs> you know what or the, the ups this, trucks this is the next uh, like uh, at, at that point why are we bothering to have the experience of walking on a plane and arguing about where our seat is and how close to the wall at the front of the plane we are wouldn't it be nicer to just walk into a pleasant place there's ambient music going you think that you're airport about to get club, a massage airport club Mm. Uh, and then they say <laughs> sitting at the bar at an airport club, a hundred dollars. Where's then, my, where's the form? I'll and, fill it out right uh, now. And, and then you lay down in a coffin. Nope. And they just then, trank me. And then sitting yes. at the bar, they just roofie <laughs> all the drinks. All the drinks are drugged. <laughs> don't even, don't even lay down in the coffin. Nope. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Bryce. <laughs> no, if, I, if this is reliable and if there's a, let's say 99.999, whatever, like you, it's very rare. And it makes an extraordinary gizmodo post when somebody, I woke up during my flight and let me tell you what it's like. Here's, here's the future. Oh my that, God. Waking uh, up in the middle of that too. And you're in the friggin' matrix. Here's the future that the liberals are trying to keep from you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I go to the airport. I go to the airport lounge. All the bartenders are dressed the exact same to the point where they look like they are like in a uniform with the same facial hair. You can barely tell who they are. They all go by the same name. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I'm sitting there for whatever amount of time. I have a few regular drinks. And then they're like, uh, are you ready to settle up, sir? Uh, uh, and I'm like, uh, yes, I am. And you're like, uh, so you're officially saying... One more yeah. drink, and, and then and a, a blue cup comes out. Yep. And then <laughs> all comes of a sudden, big Sharpie uh, X on the he, side. He, of it. he goes, uh, uh, "Well, I'll let you know when I can bring your check." Uh, I go, "Boo!" Oh, <laughs> next thing you know, Boo. got I'm back that up. check for you. I'm, yep. <laughs> oh wow! I'm in another airport lounge. <laughs> yep. I just get up and I walk. To wherever all I'm going. All of their names are John, right? They're all John. <laughs> John. Hi, you, John. Yep, yep. And they're like, uh, uh, hi, John. And, and they know your name because, like, they've got AR glasses or whatever. Whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't know. We'll figure uh, it out. And then they're all, they're all I'll like, be Steve. Uh, like, I mean, like, <laughs> if we just want to simplify it, it'll so, just be John and Steve. I, I'm certain uh, you've heard the story, Justin. I, I don't know if Bryce has heard the story. Like, that was a magic trick that was performed on James the Amazing Randy successfully. Do you know this? Uh... Keep, keep, keep he had a surgery procedure that he had to go all the way under for with general anesthesia. Yeah. And so and that stuff is so precise that uh, uh, this anesthetic technician had made a game of saying, OK, here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, count down from 10 mm. to, to what you're like, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Like, wait, uh, what just happened? They're like, oh, you've had the procedure. 
<laughs> like, yeah, because like, they, they, they just started counting back. And, and yes, yeah. they, they noted when now, consciousness was lost. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they remember that number. And then they started saying seven, six, five, four, flip the switch. Three, two, two one. Yes. And okay. it was a completely seamless, unbroken experience for, yeah. for him. I, uh, right, but you get like, tranked at a bar and then thrown in a meat wagon that got flown across the skies and then wake up at another bar. I guess. Uh, see, the the one thing about it's weird is it is a premium on transportation, but it doesn't make your transportation any faster. It only makes it more comfortable. It, yes. which which gives it a very like a which is I believe bougie, all I want. The very bougie, right? Because because the other side of this, right? The 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 other side of the glass is like okay, cool. So now you've got people like having to deadlift bodies on and off a plane. You had to be carting people Those around. Have on exoskeletons a big or something. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Uh, uh, welcome to Comfort Airlines. Yeah. Uh, let me remind you of the following. Know this. Know that. Know that. The punishment will be you will remain conscious the entire flight long yeah. <laughs> allow me to be clear Ew, that's pretty gross. dystopic uh Ew. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be awake for it yeah that's plane. i don't want to do that anymore yeah. now i just want to get tranked at a bar and and brought onto a plane and I, yes it's like yes it's a little resource intensive i've been kidnapping now what, what, I mean, whatever well, well fine it'll be for everybody <laughs> at some point we'll have a napping. coupon day i oh. Uh, okay, so air napping, and then it's air dash napping, and you're and it's this little guy sleeping like the Dunkin' Donuts guy. Here's what here's what I think. What we're really getting at is, um, it's kind of neat to see some sunsets from the sky, some landscapes Sometimes, from the sky. Yeah. You know, that's kind of neat. Kind of uh, neat. Uh, yeah. There was a time there was that's my house. That's right. always a neat thing that's to a, do. That's mm-hmm. a neat moment, right? Um, but but uh. Ne- the, the, I'm not gonna say all the novelty of flying through the sky at 35,000 yep. feet is yep. is dead in my heart, but I'm gonna say enough of it is dead that if I could just uh, lay down in a coffin and get up immediately, no sitting around. Like like uh, I tried really hard to get work done. Uh, you yeah. can't do the work. You, you can't do work. Well, uh, and, and, and in fact, nobody wants you to do work. There's a reason no. they, they took out they, the phones. They don't want you to work. No, mm. but it, uh, they used to have phones in the back. And they only too. cost $30 a minute. Correct. And um, and everybody was like, I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously it was profitable. Like they didn't want you to do it but, then either. Uh, well. And then for, for $30 a minute, you got the pleasure of having a phone conversation. I'm on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry, right, I can't hear you over the plane. That uh, that was actually <laughs> that I'm on. Uh, that was actually a really good salesman trick. Is uh, uh, you know, give me so and so. Well, I don't know if you. I'm on a plane, and everybody knew that this was seven dollars yeah. a minute. Yeah, so and they go. would instantly get you in. Speaking of phone calls, yeah. Well, a uh, call call your bank because you're gonna go support us on <laughs> patreoncom slash <laughs> Okay, all right. Every all right. week, I, will, I swear, I swear. Reminder that uh, this is not a prank call uh, request for prank. This calls. is not us telling you to make a prank phone call right now. Oh no, no, no. Okay, but but if you got <laughs> your phone oh, out, it's oh not a prank. Prank. Uh, wait. <laughs> Dialed Bryce's number. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Like, like. Uh, Call your bank and He's demand for it. <laughs> to, to let them <laughs> let you support us on Patreon. Yeah, and yeah. just I want to know how that goes. Yeah. Hey Chase, I guess, uh, you I'm know gonna... what? That is a prank. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was a, a liar. I was yeah. lying. So I instead, lied. call instead Bryce that. at the following number. <laughs> Go to patreon.com slash weird things. Support us, support this, and uh we'll we'll bring Andrew back one day. <laughs> Yeah. He's, he's he's on a flight somewhere. <laughs> I feel like people enjoy the double bones. <laughs> hey, you see this? Uh, our friends over at Samsung showed off something neat the other day. Do you have this? They went. <laughs> so uh, they added a new. Boy, Andrew really is gone. <laughs> he's gone. Yeah. What, do you know the name of the Samsung uh, virtual assistant that they had on the phones? Uh, uh it- do- Dodgy. Bixby? It's Bixby. Bixby. It's Bixby. That's, good. That's a good name. I, I I might sue him if I was one of the descendants of Bill Bixby. Hey, Bixby. That's what you'd probably say to talk to your Samsung. Right, but yeah. then it would respond with, in the voice of the Incredible Hulk. Hulk. Bixby <laughs> mad. <laughs> yeah. 
Hold that was, that was 4.5 Durango. stars on Yelp. Bigsby yeah. Banner, right? Well, you'd say, you'd say Bigsby, uh, but he, 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 he would respond with, you know, I was also, I had my own show. It was called The Magician. Yeah. Was he We're not my, doing The Hulk. My favorite Martian as well. I am not that old. Neither am I. That was a test. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that in the Incredible Hulk television show, um, they changed the character's name from uh, uh, to Bruce David Banner David, to David Banner from Bruce Banner because Bruce was too associated with the homosexual lifestyle. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But they did they did keep it as a middle name, David Bruce Banner. Yeah, yeah. So he was just getting the middle. <laughs> <laughs> they kept it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well. Discreet. Well, this Bixby has a new feature. Uh, it's going to let users... It was kind of weird that Bill Bixby was always grabbing this part of his hand, though. <laughs> Price's face. I swear. <laughs> if you don't watch us live at twitch.tv slash attack, then you need to, because especially on these episodes, Bryce, let's just say he's had it, and it's up to here. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, they've announced a new feature. It will let users clone their voice to answer phone calls. Mm. Now, this will only work in Korea at the moment because their custom voice creator is only on a few of the devices that are in Korea. Um, and it's not even the first time you could answer a phone call via text. Uh, some Samsung devices have Bixby text call, uh, but this that used a generic artificial uh, voice where this one would uh, presumably train on your the user's voice and then... Type out whatever, or say out whatever you type. I mean, there's there's no getting this toothpaste back in the tube, is there? I mean, there's no putting the cat back in the bag. There's no taking there's, the... There's no making a... Soon, soon, AIs will know how to make many metaphors. <laughs> then where will I be? <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask that GPT. Well, and that's interesting metaphors. because there, there is, like, you know, like we mentioned, there is already a version of this, so it's it's... Not like people have been clamoring for like, oh, just let me text on my phone call. I think the AI voice element does make it a a, a, a novelty, right? It makes it a spectacle. Well, so is the, is the functional purpose of it to like, instead of reaching right now, if, if you reach my voicemail, it's a black hole and I almost never hear the thing. I just see that you called and then I call back. And then- um, You're right, Brian, you can't unring that bell. Uh, oh no, go on. Uh, keep for, going. For, no, no, for, no, I don't want to interrupt you. Go for, ahead. For, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. But uh, but if instead mm -hmm. it was me saying, "Hey, you've reached Brian's chat bot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, tell me wow. a bit about what you're doing, mm -hmm. and then uh, what's up?" Yeah, I mean, because you can't unscramble that egg. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. And yeah. And, 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 and the and next thing. Like, so if I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like. This, you know, restate passing the ideological Turing test of, yep. of like fully seeming to comprehend what they're having. And if that happens, mm -hmm. we'll all know. Yeah. You can't unpaint that picture. <laughs> <laughs> you could, and you could keep going with that, Brian, right? You could have a chatbot that is responsive to the people who call in, but then it could also summarize those calls, summarize those messages. You could work this with something like a Zapier or an automation tool to say like, hey, someone called me about an email. The thing knows I need to send an email, may, write up a draft and open it up in Gmail for me. Well, and, and there are some yeah. things- Because you can't unsay what's been said. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like some of them, the AI would be able to immediately discern whether or not this was a time sensitive task. Like for example, if it's a voicemail from Bryce saying, the edit's all wrong, we have to pull it. Um, mm -hmm. then, then that implies that whatever it is has been posted and this is an urgent task and should go at the top of the list. Yeah. Can't unbreak that vase. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're only convincing me of that. I, it was very fast. <laughs> it was very fast. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I do think that we are due for a reimagining of text and telephone because i think that there have been meaningful changes in not only the delivery methods of it be it over uh ip versus uh telephone technology like we've seen in the past we've seen uh chat evolve greatly from sms to something that is uh something richer through various other uh, apps and platforms and stuff like that what i think we might be headed toward is something where there is a seamlessness to like, you don't have a phone app and a text app. iPhone is just a way that you talk to somebody. And 
uh, depending on what you are doing, you it might be a FaceTime, it might be a text message, but you are never, you can want to interact with people however you want. Uh, if, if, you, if you pick up your phone, it'll always have your, your face there. So if you want to keep holding it up, when you hit the button, uh, it'll call them. So it'll join. So when, when I see Bryce is calling me and he's holding up his, his phone, mm -hmm. whether or not he has hit the FaceTime app before that, I can then say, all right, well, if I'm in a place where I can actually talk to Bryce, I can hold up my phone and talk to him real quick. Or I can, uh, if I'm busy or I'm in the car or something like that, yeah. uh, A, on the server side, they could realize what that is because they could know, oh, they know he's, in, he's in, in car play mode. 60 so, miles an hour, yeah. Uh, now, Bryce can have a text-to-voice conversation with me. Yeah. Or uh, it where either just, it just picks up on my phone, or if I want to be, if I if I am in a situation where I want to text, he can. It'll be like you are on text to voice. It'll say Bryce, like what would you like to say? It'll just say it. Boom! Now in a real time communication, right? I can be responding to things via text uh, instead of the phone. Uh, there's uh, or an AI can just say like you know there could be a phone tree of for various people that are in my contacts for my wife or, or people that I, uh, that rely on me mm. for my schedule, my schedule, you'd be like, Hey, what is Justin doing right now? And, and it can say his schedule is blah, 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 blah. Like there's, there's a million different things that I think once a lot of these technologies fold in on each other are going to be available. And I think we probably see stuff like that a little sooner rather than later. Uh, uh yes, very much so. Um, uh, sorry, Bryce, it sounded like you had a well, uh, And kind of what you described functionally is not far off from what is capable today, right? Yeah. We have voice to, we have voice to text with, with Siri. We've got uh, message announcements with, with the CarPlay and, and mm -hmm. iMessage stuff. Um, you know, cars now have infotainment centers in them and microphones. So you can, ha have a, you can have a text back and forth. Like all the pieces are there. And I think what's holding something like that back is it's a good idea. But it's not a big idea, and it's it's the kind of thing that would need like the like Apple or Google would need to make something like this to get it deep onto the phone. Oh, and I, and I, and and I think that, that that's where it's going to go. It's going to be Android or or iOS that does it. Question: mm -hmm. Near future, not even far future. Near future. Yeah. Apple has been very uh, present in having you create your own little avatar avatars and emojis uh, uh, to open your phone. You have to do a little thing called update your daily scan of your face so that it has, it, so it has a, a better model. version and yeah. that's, and that's for your experience because you are doing it right. And How long this. before we all also are recording four sentences into our phone. And so now when Brian texts me and I'm driving, it is not the Siri voice that is telling me Brian Brushwood said. It is Brian Brushwood's AI-generated voice explaining what he said to me. And now that is a server-side thing where I can choose to say, oh, yeah, whenever this person's texting me, uh, use their... Though, uh, that might have to be some... I could... The, the thing about that is, at least in terms of Apple, they're moving away from the server side delivery, right? They're trying to do more of Siri stuff the on, lag. on device. Part of, partly, partly the lag, partly security concerns. And so in that, that case, that wouldn't, uh, at least but no, but that, that, that would just be, I wonder materially how much more data that would be than the JPEG or the Animoji or something that you are already, when, when you... Mm -hmm get a text from somebody and they say, Hey, they have new stuff in their profile. Would you like to update it? And I say, yes. And so now the picture that I took of my friend four years ago was replaced with their Animoji. Yeah. That could also come with those four sentences. Yeah. That is enough to train the on device uh, AI to say, Oh, well, that's what. So yeah. let, uh, here, here's a very real life example where this would come into play that happened just two hours ago. I have a friend of mine who's in a difficult medical situation um, and I experienced a 45 minute, very joyful conversation with my friend and his wife was on speaker. Um, and there, we, we, we talked about the relief that it wasn't uh, you know, worse and, and, and yeah. what the path forward looks like or whatever. And I called Bonnie 
uh, to report all of this to her. And that conversation, had the call gone through, would have gone, you know, it would have been 10 minutes of us talking about the 45 minute conversation. Yeah. So instead, I was like, well, she didn't answer. So then I just texted her. Uh, talk to so and so. Bah, bah, bah. Lots of laughs, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And and um, imagine, imagine it, uh, your relationship. If you trust your AI bot on your phone enough to let them listen to that conversation, then you could just say, "Hey, tell Bonnie about that conversation," and then Brian could show up that with, at first with a text yep. that just says, "Talk to so and so." Lots of laughs. Then and you could just hit more. And then an expanded version of it would say, we talked about blank, blank, and blank. We remembered so-and-so. We, we talked about anxiety and stress and ways to cope or whatever. And you could be like, tell me more, and then, or not. That is know? happening right now with Teams. Teams plugged in ChatGPT specifically to keep meeting notes. So now no human would have to write down everything that was talked about. It would record the, the thing. And then in using ChatGPT would say, in this meeting, they talked about blah, 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 blah. They resolved to blah, 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 blah. That's not far off. I mean, the only question would be the processing power on that large language model. And I do think that's a little bit far away for any kind of on-device situation. But in terms of a server-side solution, absolutely not. Yeah. I guess in, in that specific use case, I'm icked out, not by the technical side of it, but it is a little impersonal, right? Like, talk to my wife for me. Uh, well, or, or just... Tell, hey, hey, tell, tell her, her about the thing and and uh like yeah, tell you, her I, about it I, tell her you tell yeah. her about it tell, not me tell her everything tell all your crazy, you tell her. All your crazy not, to put my, own, my own words no you can tell her about that <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, here, okay, god there was, I mean, there was a lot of nice. people getting yelled at in the 80s <laughs> <laughs> hey you get, get into get my, my car, car. <laughs> <laughs> tell her just lay off of me man also really weird press releases like hey guys the heart of rock and roll is still beating. <laughs> I just want you to know. It's a little info warsy. <laughs> uh, well, here's something for you. Uh, you might remember. You might have heard of Rogers the Musical. Yeah, that's the fake musical that became uh, kind sorry, of the what? real musical in in the MCU. In you know, sorry, did you say the what musical? The fake musical. There was a there oh, sorry, was a I fictitious musical. The what, the what musical? In, oh no! In, what was it? Hawkeye. Somebody made it. The what? Real. What? It's real now. What? Oh no! Not just that. The Disney Parks blog teased that the fake Avengers musical that appeared in Disney Plus is from our friends at IO9. Uh, in the Disney Plus show Hawkeye will debut as a short one act musical later this year at Disney's California Adventure for a limited time only. So there was rumors, I, I, I for whatever reason, I'm connected to a bunch of uh, uh, Disney people, but this has been a speculation because there was a, a new renovation in that theater. Uh, there's a reason why it is only one act because that theater does not have bathrooms. So Ooh. they have to keep everything under a certain period of time. And that, I guess that used to be a place where they would have a frozen thing in, yeah. in park. And they had to cut. People were always wondering, like, wait, why are you showing, like, a gigantic swath of frozen, but you were cutting little things? And it's because they had to keep it under, by state law, under a, a certain oh, wow. period of time. Because if you are keeping people in a facility for longer than that, you need bathrooms. They, wow. they have a law. Uh, well, California. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't trap I, people. I, I'm gonna bet that. that law doesn't exist in Florida. <laughs> uh, I think that no, those They're are code. those are pretty. Yeah, yeah, those yeah, are like building code space. things. Like, uh, I mean, they, they definitely had it down to a science when when I was doing Universal Halloween Horror Nights, where it's like they uh, they knew that there was a right number of minutes to go, which yeah. was about 22, and yeah. and. Beyond that, uh, uh, everything gets more complicated. So I would, yeah. So apparently it was a 30 minute melody of Frozen. So it was like, oh, you're going to see Frozen in the park. And it's a 30 minute version of it. And people were like, like that's kind of weird. Why 30 minutes? That's why. Mm -hmm. And so I would suspect that this would be a, a 30 minute version of Rogers, the Hamilton esque musical yeah. uh, for uh, that was in Hawkeye. So. I can do this all day. I think I remember is the uh, yeah the, the, the final number. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Save the city. I think. Is. How, how do you think it would be? And I, I suppose eventually we'll talk to a human who does this to try to make it. Like, do you? Th I, I suspect they'll eventually make it quite good because they're a machine <laughs> that refines things. Uh, and by quite good, I mean everybody goes in thinking it's like like Tenacious D. Like you go into Tenacious what? G D with with the joke being. 
It's ha, two, ha, ha. two overweight guys yeah. playing metal on acoustic guitars. By the end of it, uh, uh, Explosivo is one of the best songs you've ever heard. Yeah. Right. Like, I suspect they're aiming for that. And hypothetically, if they nail it, uh, what must that be like to be on the team is what I wonder. But that, uh, I mean, that presumes that people who go to Disney California Adventure aren't Disney and Avengers, like, full faith fans right like you're describing a certain amount of skepticism for the biggest media franchise in the world well what what i mean is uh, I, I, I think you're saying that you would walk in expecting it to be perfunctory and something that is less than what they put a television budget into on hawkeye mm -hmm. you will likely walk in and be like oh wow they actually made the closest approximation to the Hamilton stage that you could in this venue and everybody is giving it their all because they want to do it. And that's the magic of Disney. Like I, I would imagine most of the reviews are, well, I went in to have a laugh, but I'll be danged if that wasn't great. You know, and my uncle had never watched a single Avengers anything. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he loved it. I, I think. I and he's suspect. both Rogers and Hammerstein. <laughs> it's just, I I guess it's like I don't know I and I'm not like a Disney diehard but I I don't know I seem to think that Disney fans just kind of assume all of their stuff will be great especially yeah, when it comes to I, parks yeah I I think but uh, but but what I don't know is to the casual because a lot of people go to Disneyland that don't know all the Disney lore but they know that the teacup ride spins around and so they get on that mm -hmm. and uh and they're like I bet I'll spin around uh, uh kind of like a, I don't know the Tiki Hut is a weird one it's just a bunch of birds the singing tiki or room. whatever yeah um the uh -huh. it is still my favorite we went the last time we were there and uh it's just it's from an era where i guess you were so amazed that robots existed <laughs> you didn't notice that they made the most noise you've ever heard <laughs> like we are so spoiled like, it's like it's like like, like, like uh, in my head as a child all i remember is like in the tiki 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 <laughs> room you go there as an adult it's just clack 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 it's like eleven thousand typewriters going at the exact same time you can barely hear the track going in the background uh, oh. What what I would what I find more interesting about this is I would not be shocked if they're going to be keeping a very close eye as to how busy this attraction is and whether or not it is something that has a line on it because I would not be shocked considering how much Disney has had a footprint on Broadway if this is something that they might want to take even more seriously. It okay. kind of it kind of seems like ceremonial almost to me. Like I can't imagine this doing anything other than succeeding amazingly right. because they've already got a idea for a three, five but, and, players. And, and we have a model to follow there because uh, uh, Hamilton, the, it was a one note joke that I, I remember seeing Lynn manuel Miranda talking to, you know, performing for Barack Obama. He's like, I made a music, a rap musical about the guy who ran a bank. And everyone was ha ha ha. And then it stopped being funny and it became awesome. That's, that's what way, we're going to see. Can we just talk about that? All right. Like, oh, just, that's, just how, those are just the how, humble how, origins. Uh, anyway, so I was doing poetry for Barack Obama <laughs> and I said, oh, this old thing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yes, and whatever. <laughs> Lynn Manuel, get here's, over yourself. Here's an old thing. Um, I don't. <laughs> now that I realize this, I don't know if I. Can All right, it it's my birthday next week. <laughs> Knock it off. Oh, stop. <laughs> get off my ass. So, are you? <laughs> do you know the ruins of Vindolanda? Have you heard of Vindolanda? Oh, mm, I, no. I, I only had the Atari version. On the ruins of Vindolanda, you okay. can climb the Andes. I, uh, uh, did you ever Duck see the dart? <laughs> the, the Jack Black uh, pitfall thing? Yeah. I was pitfall Harry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Vindolanda was a fort uh, in northern England. I think the ruins are still there. Um, uh, that is near Hadrian's Wall uh, on the borderlands of what was once uh, the Roman Empire. Mm. This uh, sounds like my favorite MMO. So archaeologists have found uh, a wooden figure mm -hmm. in a rubbing Roman his thumb, <laughs> <laughs> and um, scientists have made some some really fascinating conclusions about this object. Um, I just 
It's a it's a wooden dildo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you. I knew you were right. I knew you were right. <laughs> It was a wooden dildo. Two thousand year old dildo. So this was discovered. Yeah, that looks like a like a like a peen. Yeah. Right. Well, um. so it was discovered in 1992, and they thought it was a darning tool. A darbing tool. A darning. darning. What? All right. What is a darning tool? Oh darn it! You know. Do you know what a darning tool is? Uh, it's something to do with uh, uh, textile manufacturing. When you don't want to say uh, damn? Something about sewing. Oh, Although it's I, a mitting, a mending a hole in knitted material by interweaving yarn. They thought it was a darning tool that for some reason needed a, a, a glands. <laughs> and, and indeed it's it got does. It's got a ridge. <laughs> it's got a ridge. Circumcised. Yeah. <laughs> it's got, well, you know, it could just be pulled back. So <laughs> scientists have found three uh, possible explanations for this device. Yeah, <laughs> one of them could have been a grinding pestle. You know, yeah, it might. It, it does. It does look like that. Uh, uh, you know, I have seen a lot of those on Grinder. You know, it might have uh, <laughs> potentially exactly. infused food, cosmetics, or medicine with spiritual properties. Back in this time, penises were everywhere. Phallic imagery <laughs> no, was everywhere. Many, many say. <laughs> many have. Many are saying. Many are saying that there were penises everywhere. <laughs> They were a, quote, ubiquitous sign of protection from our friends at Science Alert. So that's idea one. Maybe it was a pestle. Yep. Unfortunately, when you look at it, you're, you're, there, there's not uh, staining. There's not discoloration on the yeah. blunt end. There's not um, uh, any sort of blunt force trauma, uh, it appears there. So the second theory uh, it was that it was a penis for a statue or it may have been displayed on a building. And this was very common in Greece and Rome. Uh, they might have rubbed the penis for good luck, or yep. uh, if it was outside. I'll, I'll bet that was like a saucy thing to do, like like you know, like kind of uh, teenagery, early twenties. Like, hey, hey, good luck, buddy. Uh, you know, it really depends on the culture, and and you know, even in our modern world, there are some cultures that have a, a very serious connection to penises and semen and stuff mm -hmm. like that like that, that that are just radically different than than ours you know uh, we you know even in western european cultures that that look upon american culture as more prudish uh everyone still wears pants right like you know there's the, it, it's it's not a situation where in many other cultures the idea of eating your vanquished enemies severed penis is looked at as how you gain strength how yeah. you gain their vigor yeah. uh that is those are elements that happen now so who knows i mean back in 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 that ancient culture it could it it might have been like a oh, remember to rub the willy like or it could be like right oh like uh, I, although I, i'm gonna now, get the job today the, little little jimmy uh, 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 the, it is curious that there's a handle on it. <laughs> so, so the idea of it being an outdoor decoration, that was the second theory, but there's no signs of weathering. There's no, no. Um, there's no rub. Curiously head. smooth. Curiously smooth. So the third and final explanation uh, was that this was a uniquely preserved dildo from the second century CE. Um, we knew, uh, this is uh, archaeologist Rob Collins from uh, Newcastle, we know that the ancient Romans and Greeks used sexual implements. The object in Vindolanda could be an example of one. I mean, I, uh, uh, as I learned from the documentary Kunk on Earth, um, uh, prehistoric humans were very, very similar to modern-day humans. And uh, among the things humans seem to like is... Um, Simulating sex. Yeah. yeah. I that tracks. Stimulating mm. sex. Stimulating simulating sex. Mm. Simulating stimulating sex. Uh, Simmering. <laughs> Stimulating. <laughs> simulating sex. There, 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 there's no unearthing that dildo. Mm. There's no, no, I think you can re-earth I think this you can is why the robots are gonna win. To <laughs> this is why the robots better. are gonna win. <laughs> yep, yep. That's why. Uh they've also thought that this dildo may not have been used for penetration because there's not any signs of wear on the exterior, really. Um, and it may have supported uh, clitoral stimulation instead. It's uh, a, a million dildo. questions that are inappropriate for this podcast yeah. uh, uh, that I would have to further that point for science. But maybe <laughs> another day. Yeah, we can leave it there. There's some yeah, darker. Let's leave it. Let's leave it there. I don't want to get into the rough... I mean, well, let's the, the, we, the, we say Andrew's gone, but 
uh, he'll come back someday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't want to. I don't, I, 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 I don't want to expose the rough and smooth principle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that'll do it for stories today. You guys want to do some picks? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, I want to double down on uh, Justin. Got me rereading. Oh book. God, you're gonna take mine? Oh, well, I don't know. Let's do it together. Okay. Our pick is the status game, which means I'm better than Brian, and Brian's <laughs> working to get uh, up to my level. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! So this is the sad escape. Is that what you the said? The sad escape. No, his pick was the sad escape. <laughs> oh, Mine no. is the status game. Yeah. <laughs> the sadist game. Okay. And I would, I would, I would, I would, uh, I would, I would uh, uh, very the much recommend game. the audiobook because the it's read by the author who sounds exactly like the Geico lizard. <laughs> uh, uh, on top of that, I'm now reconstructing. Um, uh, I know you uh, heard about it from Teasdale. We'll talk about that. But 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 I'm now remembering where I heard it. I, is I believe uh, the author was on a, um, a, a Making Sense podcast, uh, and and then I was like, that sounds good, and I ended up hearing it. Yeah, uh, the Status Game by Will Store is is what we are talking about, and it dares to imagine that a lot of the confusing elements of our world can be explained very simply. That we are as humans programmed to find ourselves in a status. And we do it at work, we do it in family, we do it in our society, we do it in our online bubbles. You are constantly assessing where you are. Are you at the bottom? Are you at the top? Are you somewhere in the middle? And you are desperate to not be falling farther. You are very excited and desirous to drive uh, higher, but more than anything, you are, uh, uh, your, your, your personality dictates that you don't necessarily want to move all that fast and you are all incentivized as a community to protect the game itself, protect the status ladder and, and, and that if, you are on. If you can mm. elevate your game over other games. Yes. It yeah. Sounds and like the meta, the meta status yeah. game to it. It sounds like the UCV improv book. <laughs> uh, kind of. It's it, it really. They, and they call it because they call it the game, too. The, when they do improv, they call it the game. So yeah, I mean, I, I would I would very much encourage reading it. Uh, it is one of those big... Uh, it's been a while since I've read a book that has been, like, a big thinker for me that, like, has made me sort of uh, recontextualize things. Uh, it has brought... Uh, it has brought peace and understanding <laughs> uh, to, to uh, 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 some things because it's made me understand or at least come to peace with our inhumanity to each other uh, in general, but more specifically online. Uh, but when you, when you understand one of the things that uh, he points out and he uses a lot of examples, this is one of those, like uh, uh, if you like every other paragraph, him citing a study or giving a proof positive example of why something is the case. Yeah. Uh, this is your book uh, it, mm. to the point where for me, I like to luxuriate in stories a little bit more, but one of the more compelling ones that he tells is a young mother, uh, 18, who has a, 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 a midwife come in to help her deliver her baby uh, at home. Mm -hmm. And the midwife is a super badass, a mother herself, who is like giving her the, the no jokes, like, uh, uh, all right, you got to do this, you got to do that, make sure you're taking these, and, and you're, you're relaxed, how far along are you? And then mentions, uh, oh, and, and are you going to vaccinate your child? Uh, she then, as an 18-year-old who is very impressed by this woman, uh, follows oh. her advice to go on various different online forums and becomes a great uh, 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 anti-vaxxer admirer. And uh, if, if anything, you know, a warrior. And what he describes through this story is that what we often think of as hostile behavior online and in person from let's say for example anti-vaxxers mm -hmm. uh and this is certainly this was written it was published in 21 so it was almost certainly done before what we understand to be uh, uh the the vaccine argument this is more of the mmr vaccine for kids but when you are experiencing hostile behavior we often think of it as futile if not kamikaze-esque behavior from people that we don't respect that is there to kind of ruin our day. Uh, what he says in, in the book is that more important to anybody who is hostile to somebody else online 
you are not doing it to proselytize and you're not even really doing it to hurt your enemy. You are doing it so you can bring back the story of how brave you are protecting your status game back to your tribe mm. so you can describe, oh my God, I was sitting with my sister-in-law and I told her that blah, blah, blah. Can you believe that she didn't know? Blah, 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 blah. That proves that you are out there protecting everybody else on the ladder. You are showing that this is still a thing, that this still exists. And so really our interaction, what we find to be the thing that vexes us so much that we want to fight with people online isn't about us at all. We are just kind of props. We're just trees that, that, are, that are there to be shaken so somebody can go back to their tree shaker forum and talk about how they, they really rustled that birch. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm about two-thirds of the way through now, and I really cannot say again how much this man sounds like the Geico lizard. <laughs> and, and it's just so delightful to hear that, that just charming British accent tell me about the status world and how much he we can save on car insurance the uh. the singular fact that caused me to sit up straight and immediately buy the book because i heard him being interviewed on a podcast was the with flat certainty the kind of flat certainty that only comes from somebody who is able to cite study after study after study that correlates these things he's like mm -hmm. yeah if you have high status you live longer healthier better lives uh, by all measures yeah and it's like what uh like you just you right. literally live longer it's like yeah uh, you can smoke your entire life, but if you smoke and also you're famous, you'll live longer. Yeah. You just won't get the diseases that smoking causes. And it's like, say that again. <laughs> and he's like, uh, if you do heroin, but you're also famous, you will live longer and you will not have the problems that come with heroin. Yeah, he, he makes the argument that based on where we are in our own status game. So if you are the mayor of a tiny town and everybody knows you and doffs their cap and respects you and, and you are the dude, that means you are functionally the same as a best-selling author who is, you're, you're Stephen King. Like, yeah. because, as far as, or at least that's how you feel when you wake up. You wake up in the morning feeling exactly like Stephen, like King. Stephen yeah. King feels where it's uh -huh. like, no one's ever going to sell more books than me, or no one's ever going to like have the same kind of esteem. I'm going to be the master of horror and suspense until the day that I die. And I'm going to keep cashing checks for the Shawshank redemption right. until I'm, I'm dead and gone. Uh, that's the same that the small town mayor feels that the, the tribal chieftain of some uh, remote village feels uh, that, that it's just our own understanding of the world uh, you know, and he gets into a little like it's I can understand why it's not a bigger book because it is very strident in its idea of like, you don't know what the world is. The world is a bunch of vibrations and and uh, right. uh, uh, light waves that we are making sense of. Your friends don't look like your friends. Right. Uh, uh, this is all your brain interpreting things. So if we understand that, that we are all just jellyfish floating around that are uh, have made a, a deal in principle for what a shared reality is, let's understand the rules of these shared realities. And uh, okay. that's a hard one to swallow. <laughs> like, like you have to you have to kind of like be in the frame of mind to uh like i'll just say this if the man in the audiobook did not sound like the geico lizard ah! and instead sounded like your college roommate who just like had coughed out a gigantic plume of pot smoke right uh it would be the same level of like big ideas dot 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 man but this again because he overproves everything I, I found it to be remarkable, and uh, I, I very much highly recommend it to anybody. Uh, yeah, on, on the idea of, uh, I've heard it proposed, uh, as one framework was uh, when, when you're looking at a Windows desktop, you, that's not actually a file, that's not actually your hand, uh, uh, any of those things. Uh, in fact, they're, they're just ones and zeros on a disk, but n you don't think of it that way at all. Similar to, you don't, you don't hold up a phonograph record and... Just look at it and enjoy Beethoven's Fifth. You know, yeah. it's like it's like no, I you I need it to sound like a thing that'll make me think the thoughts or whatever. Yeah. But but um, uh, it does uh, on the longevity thing. Uh, there was a, a a neat little article, just three points. Uh, somebody studied the world's oldest woman, 102 years old or 122 years old, uh, uh, longest lived on record. Uh, do you want to know the three secrets to living a very long time? 
if this is the woman that I'm thinking of, she was like like the smoking and taking a shot of vodka like every day. No, it, it, she did smoke a little. So uh, number one, be wealthy. Yep. Number two, don't smoke very much is the way they put it. Yeah. It's like she smoked briefly. Uh, and then uh, uh, number three, uh, anyone have a guess? Nope. Uh, have lots of friends. Have yeah. a strong social net, which ties into the status game where it's right. like if you feel interconnected with everyone, it's like, well, I mean, I would die tomorrow, but but fuck, the, or, whoops, that'll Andrew's mess up here. a lot of <laughs> that'll mess up a lot of things, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, but I have lunch with Fran next exactly. week, so exactly. I guess I yeah. won't die. Uh, which uh, we've talked about the experience of being about to stand on, get on stage when you know you're getting sick and you're like, I, I can't, can't, can't do it. Be sick for some miraculous reason. Uh, your body is like, all right, we'll pretend like we're well for, okay, you're done. And it's like, oh no, I need to keep being well. And it's like, yeah, but you're not. And also I know I, I have access to those same eyes. Uh, yeah. You're not, you're not on stage. You're anymore. not on the road anymore. Now you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool. So yeah, I would I would uh, recommend it to everybody. It's been it's been a truly remarkable book, and I've enjoyed it. Nice. Uh, what about I, you? I got a pick. I uh, with with the internet changing, I I I realize like I don't really have the same connection to news that I used to because I'm not using the bird website anymore. And I went back to an old friend. And it's still there, and they had all my login information, and it was like a warm hug. I'm back on my news blur stuff. What? Uh, this is an RSS reader um, that has been around since, like, right after Google Reader died. So they've been updating it and keeping it up to and, and keeping it new and fresh over over time. Um, it's, it's really nice for a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, a lot of these websites don't put the whole article in the RSS feed anymore, which is understandable. They want to get people to go to the website. So news they can show you ahead. So you, so you, yeah, get a, get a hit. So uh, News Blur will just, pull the, will just fetch the full text for you. So, <laughs> so it'll show it in line. And then it's, a, yeah, uh, uh, there, you can train it. So it's like, hey. Rice's these pick is screwing over content creators. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can train it to say like, okay, these keywords or these tags don't show me these show me more of these and so yeah. it's got a unread and unimportant sort of element to it um they have a new or i guess a newer premium upper premium tier where uh, they call it the archive tier and what they will do is they'll go to all of your feeds that you subscribe to and it will just make a copy of everything that they've ever posted forever and they will just keep it forever so you can go and search and keep whatever archive of of the internet you want Basically, uh, anything that you have, uh, as they put in Kunk on Earth, uh, uploaded into your mind through wireless technology called your eyes, uh, y you know is now searchable in there. Like, like if you learn a fact or half remember an article, you can go back and find it. Well, and this is more, this, this, is, this goes back in time. This will get everything ever posted. What? Yeah. More on the internet. On the on these sites, so if you if it, now it depends some on the feed and all, but if I, you want it, to, it if, sounds like you're describing just a robot that scrapes entire. Yes, yes, okay. uh, that's why it's posting for, the full yeah the full uh, text. I mean, uh, like outside of the wishes of the publisher. I mean, like yes, that is true, and also <laughs> very few people are doing this. These are this is a very like I I think that this is a little enthusiast for a RSS reader. Um, it still feels like the old days of Google Reader in terms of, of uh, just fit and finish, you know. Um, but but I think it's great. I think it, it the it's it's still up and running. It's still around. <laughs> I um, am I, I it, and it made perfect sense for me to go back to the other subscription. It's like three dollars a month or something. But that's unlimited websites and all sorts of other good stuff. So I really dig News Blur. Um, I feel like I am more up to date yeah instead of just opening up safari and what's on the verge what's on this and yeah. this and this you know at some point that casual walk around the internet yeah just becomes like okay i'm just making a circle and i'm waiting and this is not even the best it way just to tastes do that. better when you're robbing journalists <laughs> just when you're taking money out of their family's <laughs> mouth like you're just like mm, 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 it's just so sweet mm, 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 mm. Uh, oh, I'll get, you know what i'll pay them all their oh, fraction of a penny mm, that they value oh, me at. so sweet mm. oh, oh. 
If only they valued my personal data the same. Oh, oh that's a good counter. Good counter. Blah, blah. Well, hold on. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> you can't unspill that milk. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. See, you can't. You can't. You need a funnel. Anyway. Uh, so that's our picks. That's some weird stories. Uh, anything else, guys? Anything else weird? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, the only the only other thing, and maybe we'll follow it up uh, later, but uh, the article that I sent to you guys, and we kind of touched oh, on it, yeah. was uh, that, that Samsung thing that will create a simulacrum of your own voice uh, led uh, – I read some article about uh, – basically, we're, we're in the adolescence of AI where – it's not the AIs that we should fear, but bad actors who are using AIs to do everything from ransom phone calls. Absolutely. And, and, and then all of a sudden, in, we're at that precipice of uh, even on a FaceTime call, it's like as of probably previous to today, but but you can't trust that that's an actual human on the other side. Like, yeah. Uh, well, and, and even FaceTime has the, uh, the eye adjustment. You know, they'll go in and make sure you're looking at the camera so that it looks better to the other person. Oh, that's interesting. So it, it's slightly tweaked. Right. right Wild. Right, right. Uh, um, so but but then again, like every image processor has to process the image. It, it has to, whether they smooth skin or they give you all the grain, they have to process yeah. the image data anyway. Well, and, and, uh, I want face tattoos. I, 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 I suspect that, that the solution will be some kind of trusted something that uh, uh, a service that you'll trust for a while until it gets broken and subverted or whatever. But, but basically uh, just a certification link, like, Nope, that's the authentic human you're talking to mm. and nothing else, uh, which mm. uh, that's a lot of handshakes because going to stop talking to people. I mean, I don't uh, trust either you two are human now, but, but think about, think about this. Like all communications are currently I'm just going to start hitting zero, hoping to get to the operator broken. <laughs> Like, not one phone call you could be convinced is the actual human that you think you're talking to, or even that. Not, is that a problem? Not even a video. Well, like, it's like, like, something yes, like to things note can happen. for now, yeah. but um, not one piece of content that you consume. Can, can I, you? I, I, I suspect that a lot of these, whether or not the answers to the questions that you are posing are what you are suggesting the the reality of how we will understand it will happen at a gradual pace for which we will correct we will be like oh yeah well of course there's well, a lot of back and forth. we gotta uh, use it, it, maybe it's a, you use a fleet flop to get your ding dong oh, uh, in the 1800s uh sometimes newspapers would publish photos and people would not believe them because they didn't really grasp photos they would believe the eyewitness accounts mm -hmm. and then later uh people realized humans can lie and in their eyewitness accounts. And so now they're like, well, where are the photos? And then mm -hmm. photos got broken by Photoshop and then they got fixed by. Well, wait, no, but actually don't, let's not be about that. Like did photos never got fixed? Uh, correct. But, but, but and we don't have this society got problem. fixed because we all agree that we don't believe photos anymore. Were we broke? What? No. Uh, do you believe photos? Uh, do I, do. I believe photos? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you literally just told me about how live video is altered on the fly on an iPhone. And I believe that, that but that doesn't change my, uh, like, I, I, I'm just trying to understand the terminology here. Like, what do you mean believe photos? Uh, uh, do sorry, I believe sorry. in science? Do you understand house? the power of shadows? <laughs> in this house, the voices are fake. The phone calls <laughs> no, are fake. No, no. The text Wait, messages sorry, are sorry. fake. To, what to, is to believe? Re restate it simpler. Because, um, like, Photoshop is what? not a major problem out there in the world right now. Well, uh, Even despite like, the fact uh, that it's still as, as dangerous as it was in the day. You're That's on. Cap, okay, Joe. okay, okay. There was a time. <laughs> let's go back in time. Uh, you're on a jury. Somebody oh. is accused of murder. Uh, used to oh. be, you'd hear people say, "Well, I saw it," and then and then photos came along. You're like, okay. "Well, here's a photo of him not doing it." And then now, would you send somebody to murder because there's a photo of him with a cartoonish gun, you know, photoshopped together? No, you would not. Uh, now, but that's and, also now, and now we're in the part where even if there's a video of it submitted as evidence, that would not be enough to prove to you that this person committed the murder. Well, no, but I think the, the, the thing that we're skipping over, and this is really where I've, I've held the line, and I might be wrong, but this is, this is where I'm going to operate until I am proven wrong is that we have tools to show what photoshop is we have tools to show what uh, there are hallmarks to a manipulated image uh, even if it's intensely uh, uh 
you know, persuasive to the naked eye. Correct. And but, we've never, uh, at least I'm not aware of the legal system changing the way that we take in photographic or image evidence to to verify its truth other than the way you would already verify where evidence came from to begin with, right? Like a photo, like how does anyone know that this photo is even of the incident we're talking about? Well, because someone said it is. Like on some level, there's like how deep it must the belief be for the conversation. Well, I, 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 I mean, like I'm not. We, we have another hour in the tank on this question, which is <laughs> yeah, yeah. we'll say the it good for, news for is episode. AI is peaked and <laughs> we'll never talk about it again. I was going to cut this into the middle of the episode. So, what, <laughs> anyway. all right. Well, uh, that'll do it for the Weird Things podcast. Justin, Brian, thank you so much for keeping it weird. How's it been? It's been weird. <laughs> That's my AI voice telling you it's been weird. And and I'll tell you what, man. Uh, uh, when in 20 minutes, there's some kind of like virtual avatar or, or uh, you know, we were talking about the Twitch bots, you know, standing in or whatever. Uh, uh -huh. The three of us have a fairly robust data set to, <laughs> to, to, pretty to pull together. We've talked about a lot of things and uh, uh -huh. have expressed a lot of opinions. And I think the simulacrums will be... Uh, uh, uncanny. Yeah, I mean, ICU already puts our faces on a bunch of stuff. I think that's what it'll functionally look like. I mean, someone could, you could, I mean, that's 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 society, right? You could. We live in a society. And we live in one. You could steal Dan Harlan's voice or, or friggin' Not, not Dan Cooper's. Harlan, the hardcore history guy, yes. but Dan, Dan Harlan, Harlan, the, the magician. magician. <laughs> oh, just, that's Bryce. You know, you know, sometimes he's... Anyway. All right, this is the uh what this? this is the uh the AI Oh, hold, hold hold it up to the mic. Is it is it on right now? Yeah, the same you're as I Billy Harrington and I Van Darkholm and Orson wants help as his GPU is overheating. Oh jeez. Now we got a third AI in the room and someone's GPU is overheating. Holy Something moly. Something tells me this is going to be a wild ride. Okay, all right. It looks like we're in need of some this serious This is Linus cool Tech Tips. Wow. Look at the face, though. Is the face good? I'll, here, I'll, I'll set it to you. Okay. Because sometimes the face does that. Where should I... Um... Uh, you can email it to Brykus. To what? To Brykus. All right. Yeah. All right well, that uh, sounds pretty good. Um, okay. Well, we'll we got, uh, I, got, I got something we can do for a little after things here. Sure. Uh, uh, okay, I do only have thirty minutes because I got to get back yeah, to do we'll another thing. We'll okay, sure. Uh, do you need a break, anybody? No, I need to pee. Go. Then uh, go, go, go. You know what? Oh, go, 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 uh, go, no, no, go. Okay. Oh, don't just, don't just, just, just go real quick. Go right in. Go right where you're. Bryce, standing. you play that channel. I want you to see that channel. Yeah. I want you to see that channel. Did you see the? Oh well, no. We talked. We talked about the Steam Dams one, didn't we? Yeah. On the bones. Did it go through? You emailed me, right? Do you remember me? Yeah, sometimes my... Also, this is a little... Sometimes it's a little slow to update. No, but also... Oh, do you have the outbox thing? You get stuck in, you get stuck in the outbox? You get stuck in my outbox. Damn outbox. Uh, oh, here we go. There we go. Thank you very much. You got it? Yeah. We can get this to load up here it's from Athene AI Heroes on Twitch. Will it play sound? Uh, it's. Huh. I wonder if the audio is screwed up. Quality to a source. We gotta get our source. Let me smell your dick. Oh. <laughs> it's coming in real quiet. Jordan Peterson, can you give us uh, that? I can't hear it. Oh, here's Jordan Peterson. Oh, man. We have to be mindful that AI services are already smarter than us 
and they have the potential to be the harbingers oh, of a wait, new oh, dark I, age. I hear it, it is up to the individual to strive yeah, I can to hear it. learn, think, yeah, and rise no, it, above their own it. weaknesses so they can teach AI services the proper values. As for Forsen's AI, it may be suffering from schizoid behavior due to too much chaos and disorder. The key is to always strive for order and understanding within the structure. So, did this answer your question? I like the asks. I like Dave the Chappelle, clicking between yeah. poses, AI like a like a nineties car computer I, game. At Disneyland. Oh. Yeah, the Fortnite community was shook when they heard about it. It was pretty crazy. First, Fnatic went to Epcot to explore the future. Then they Dave went to Chappelle. Hollywood Studios to try out the yeah, ride the, of the, the, yeah, the Dave, the Dave one stuff. isn't great. But they didn't know what they were in for at Disneyland. They thought they were just going to get an AI simulated theme park experience. But then, all of a sudden, the AI took the Magic Castle command. Turns out, the AI was determined to be the pretend king of Disneyland. <laughs> Everybody was so amazed. They started oh. chanting, forcing, forcing, forcing. What is it? it took the whole day. The, the, the Chappelle one isn't great. Out. The AOC one is, is uh, uh, you know, awesome. Like, yeah. Do, not bring the do they AI just switch? Uh, just switch between celebs like every couple of so minutes? People, no, does it work? people are asking questions in the chat. The oh. host is not really the host. The host is also an AI. Mm -hmm. And so I assume somebody is on the back end manually uh, uh, plugging it in, but they, it, it might not be. It might just be randomly picking. I, I, somebody's probably doing it because otherwise people would just spam racist not, stuff. And, not fooled, huh? You're saying you're not fooled? Uh, well, uh, no, I'm just thinking of what 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 the what the 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 process would be. But yeah, it, it is it is pretty it's pretty rad. That's cool. The Athena AI parody AI is pretty heroes. funny. Wow, huh. it's gonna ruin Rich Little's ruined. <laughs> He's he might go all the he way. His goose is cooked, Rich Little. It is some weird wild stuff. Oh, he's not going to be able to do that. That's not impressive anymore. There's an AI that can say weird, wild stuff. Weird, wild Wait, stuff. Was was that a Rich mm. Little thing or or a Dana Carvey thing? Because remember, he did Carcinio. I mean, I think that that was he like he was riffing on. Rich I think Little. everybody yeah. everybody was riffing on the fact that Johnny Carson said that. So that was like that right. was the the Johnny Carson version of like Hasta La Vista Baby or something like that. Like, right. Uh, but meanwhile, like oh, well, uh, yeah, we, we can go into the weeds on that. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll do an after things program here in three, two. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the After Things podcast, all about being creative professionals and people who are online way too much. I'm Bryce, joined with Justin Robert Young. Hey. And Brian Brushwood. A yodel 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 yo. That's my catchphrase. I say it all the time. And you are. And we're, we've got it on the shirts, it's on the <laughs> scarf. And it's a lot. It's got to be an extra long scarf. It, yep. uh, I mean, it's even in the the trademark that there's a little bit of a throat catch in the mm -hmm. on the third. It's mostly in the way that you use it. <laughs> so I, I got a, a an interesting. You like that? Can't this is that what it, this is what I like to call triggering Brian's eighty dick. <laughs> <laughs> just saying a thing I know he wants to talk about, wow. but he has to show tremendous willpower to stay on topic. <laughs> and I love that you're doing it. Um, I have no other way to live. <laughs> <laughs> it's a disability, and I would, I would uh, very much tell you to respect it. So this is from, uh, I pulled this from Eurogamer, but there are a few different places reporting on this. So you know Rovio. <laughs> Rovio. Eurogamer. Rovio. You know Rovio. Uh... Rovio? R-O-V-I-O. That's a game company? It is. Is that the Angry Bird Company? It's the oh, Angry Birds yeah. Company. That's right. They're changing Angry Birds. Doodly They're doodly doodly the Red doodly Birds doodly Adventure doodly doodly or something. Doodly doodly Actually, already did it once. <laughs> so yeah. so uh, Rovio came out today and said, in fact, I'll just read some of their, um, their Twitter press release. We have reviewed the business case of Rovio Classics Angry Birds. Rovio Classics Angry Birds is a re-release of the original Angry Birds game that they took down because that game didn't really have microtransactions. That game is so old, it doesn't really have a microtransaction system, and it's not it, really built for it. It was broken because they could only charge you for it once, but mm. now they fixed it. <laughs> right. And so that was the Rovio Classics Angry Birds. They've sure got they you. Some little touch-ups and stuff. We're, we're going to soak you simps for every cent. Well, not anymore. Uh, uh -oh. As of yesterday, it was unlisted from the Google Play Store. 
Um, and it and it has in, fe- in fact been renamed Red's First Flight in the Apple App Store pending review. It will be remain it will remain playable on devices where it has been downloaded even after it's been unlisted, but you won't be able to download Angry Birds anymore. You have to buy uh, Angry Birds 2 or Angry Birds Friends or Angry Birds Journey. So they don't want to use the very powerful brand name of Angry Birds on something for which they cannot monetize the most, and that includes the original game that made them famous. Yeah. So they are now renaming it Red's First Flight, an intentionally crappy name, so uh, uh, people will will not be confused. It won't they show should, up in search. It will not show up in search if you're searching for Angry Birds. You'll get Angry Birds. You're going to get all the Angry Birds oh. st- stuff that they have re-monetized. Right. Right. Yeah, that seems. Uh, I mean, are they publicly traded? I, uh, that's a good question. I think they're a European company. Well, um, while you're checking on that, they don't um, trade there. The, <laughs> like the, the yes, they are. They're on the Nasdaq. Okay, Helsinki Nasdaq. I don't know, man. Uh, I I can kind of see it both ways. It's uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, Dan Carlin. Um, Dan Carlin's business model with Hardcore History is he makes wonderful audiobooks that he gives away for free and quietly takes takes them back and takes them off the RSS feed. And if you want them, they now cost $1. Sure. That's cool. And it has worked very well for him. And I'm having... And people like, like that. Like, well, he's not trying to change it from a way that people don't like. Right. Uh, and, and, well, and, but, I mean, I'm sure the first time he did it, it wasn't like, hooray, we don't have access to this anymore. Maybe, but I bet people... I bet it's also a thing where it was never a problem because it uh, wasn't a problem. But like Bryce, someone, pro- like yes, yeah, someone. How probably, long have you been on the how internet? How long have you been on the internet? It's like yeah, someone's gonna have a problem with yes. it. Yes, but it's not like it's the very first day that 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 some old episode disappeared. Well, maybe I, I don't know. Now I'm speaking out of my butt about an instance I don't know. Well, but I, 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 here, here's all, all, all I know is this: mm-hmm. I was doing the PX3 show, and I made the decision that I was going to. Do two things. Number one, I was going to split uh, uh, my my Patreon because I I had started the Patreon as doing the daily jury Jury. show uh, or the weekly jury show at the time. Then I started doing the politics thing. And so I had them both on one Patreon. And then I decided to split it because the the Patreon was growing way more now that I was doing the politics thing. And I had the sense that people really wanted the politics and didn't necessarily want the jury show. Mm -hmm. So I kept... The reason why the the Patreon that I have right now is patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y and not PX3 is because there was the jury one. I made a new jury daily Patreon and I decided to make gated content for the PX3 show. And by and large, people did not have a problem to your point, Bryce, that in general, people were like, okay, you're not taking anything away from me. You're just putting stuff behind a paywall for people that want to pay for it. But there was a very vocal minority mm. that let me know that I was being a greedy so and so, and that I was, you know, uh, exploiting people and and yada yada yada. So I'm sure that there was a point at when when Dan Carlin did what he did and said, "All right, I'm going to monetize my back catalog and I'm going to sell them on demand for you." Uh, that some people were like, "You are being a greedy piece of poop." Sure. The uh, one one thing, and I, I I don't know the timeline, but but I know that part of the reason that everybody is okay with it now is because he's had one consistent message, which was, if you gave me a buck, I could do this forever. A dollar an episode, that's all we ask. And then when content did fall off the RSS and then showed up in a store, uh, it was indeed one dollar an episode, and that is indeed all they asked. So given the fact that they asked for a dollar and uh, the only people in a position to complain about it would be people who refused to give a dollar that was asked for them. And like in a debate situation, checkmate, it's like, how are you going to complain? But this isn't about it. It's not about debating, right? It's not about logic. Sure. But, um, uh, and also, people did pay for this game. This, I mean, Red's first yeah. fight is still a ninety-nine cent game, um, even even back then. Uh, yeah, and so it's a good game. You know, I mean, that's 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 a really serious thing. Is if you make something 
really good that doesn't need all of the trappings of uh, uh, server check-ins and uh, gotta gotta make sure your network's right. You know, and when you just make a good little game, that can be so powerful that the gravity well that that game creates or whatever your project creates is bigger than the than the thing that you've made itself. Angry Birds is no longer the Angry Birds game. It's this whole franchise of mm-hmm. games and movies and car- and cartoons and plushies and. And at the center of it can't just be a ninety-nine cent game because that's their business people. Well, and now. and yeah, uh, uh, who knows the wise nature of this? Uh, uh, it might be short-term game for something that is like that original game. You could make a business argument that it is a loss leader that gets people in the door and puts them into this ecosystem for which they will remain forever, right? Yeah. Uh, or you can make the argument that I'm sure won out in this case, which is when we turn off the 99 cent once game, we see a material explosion because the first contact that that, that everybody is getting, largely children, after they see the cartoon or watch a, uh, or see a plushie or something. A-N-G-R-Y. Yeah. Oh, is, that one. Is now something that keeps them in the game right. and uh, uh, makes way more off of them. There are certain business propositions that from a creator's point of view uh, is just explosively different. We do that with weekly uh, uh, stuff on Patreon. Like, materially. Weekly makes more money than monthly right and that's yeah. just the way it is i've uh, seen it i've seen enough use cases both ways that it really is not to me an argument uh even if you are doing stuff regularly and yes there are some people that very much are vexed by the fact that sometimes you know for for my show which if it's three dollars a week some months it's twelve dollars and randomly some months it's 15 because there was five Tuesdays in in May or whatever. Uh, Dang it, you did it again. You provided too much value in one month. Well, but no, but there's there's people that are budgeted, right? And right. they're like, right. oh, okay, well, all of a sudden this came in over my budget because of this thing, and I get it. And well, and there's more and, money to be made. But though I will say, in counter to that, is you know, you a lot of the projects that we will work on, the projects that you're describing are re- regular and reoccurring show, you yeah. know, shows or or something. They were not upgrading this. Uh, like the Rovio Classics version of this game is a remake of the original game. It looks like, but it's still. It they even uh, this is in the d- the description. No in a, a, in no in app purchases. No pop up ads. Like it's really hard to get out from under that. If that's just the way the game is, it's not like it. They're updating it and no, making and, it a whole and, thing. And so I think the ba- that value proposition is a little different. Oh no, no, of course, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was more trying to describe the fact that, like, sure. for for them, I could see the business case of rename this game. Money goes up. Uh, uh, now that might not, from the brand perspective, and I think this is probably where where Brian, if Brian were uh, Finnish and and were in the boardroom, and a very impassioned Brian Brushwood was using Finnish metaphors to explain very passionately that no, the brand value of all of this is driven by a very addictive, classic, provable, bankable loss leader, and it doesn't matter if money goes up immediately when we rename it to Red's Final Ride. Uh, we are are in a position to sell more plushies and and bind ourselves more with the audience if we keep this loss leader. I think I figured it out. I'm found the missing piece here. Okay. And I knew this was familiar because I knew I had seen Angry Birds before this news story. Um, but obviously, since it went popular on Apple Arcade, they just added relatively recently, I believe, Angry Birds Reloaded, <laughs> which is a subscription. Uh, Apple Arcade is a subscription. Rovio, I'm sure, is very tight yeah. with Apple, uh, so obviously. Uh, essentially, and this is the original game. I mean, that's how they market yeah. it. This is, hey, it's a classic game. The birds are back. So the the handshake is, uh, we would like this to be an exclusive. It's the Disney Rename vault. it. It's, yeah. the, it's the Disney vault is what yeah. we're looking at. Yeah. I mean, they even call, and this is what Apple Arcade do, has done with other titles, right, is make plus versions of classic games. They did this fr- with Fruit Ninja. They did yeah. it with Tiny Tower. They pay them a little bit to make sure it runs on the new hardware, zhuzh it up, take out the in-app purchases, and then, and then boom. your uncle, you've, you've rerun that game. You've re- uh, uh, speak, game. Speak, speak, there, there speaking of the Disney, thought, yeah. well, just, I, I'm going to just totally derail everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, the 
TV Funhouse SNL sketch of the kids going into the the the, the Disney vault. Just I watched it the other day. Oh my god! I is can't that, believe that they got. I can't that believe pick? that they got away with it. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah. Just the Robert <laughs> Smigel TV Funhouse of the Disney Vault. Uh, yeah. spe- but it's yeah. got it. Man, it's so tough because Rovio is so big now. It's not like we're talking about the um the Flappy Bird kid. Like this no. is a whole corporation involved. In fact, here this was a a follow up message by one of uh, the folks at Rovio. Um, as the statement says. It uh, Angry Birds is negatively impacting our other games, which is which is is what we as a company have to focus on. If these other games do not improve and grow, then the outlook for the entire company changes. It is harder to create new games or work on new projects. I'm sure that's not something you'd want. Which I get. I also get like that that weight and the shadow of that game. It's hard to break out of it, especially if the only way to do that is to make it totally different. So it's not just more of the same thing. It's yeah, not, I don't know. I mean, yeah. uh, look, I I mean they did finish. make Angry Birds too. I ain't finish, so like I don't know their crazy logic, but uh, uh, you know, I I I do think that there is a balance between a creator and an audience of uh, uh money versus goodwill versus nostalgia Correct. versus there's there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So I mean, uh, pilot your ship however you want. I, I am Rovio. inclined to believe that among the rights a creator has, we're not talking legally, we're talking ethically, morally, is mm-hmm. a creator who creates anything has the right to quit yep. or stop. And take it away. Yeah. Take it so away yeah, from I, you forever. I, I want to be alone, you know? Yeah. And it's, yeah. and, um, but I, I, I do think, yes. The, the thing that makes me a little weirded out is the people who bought this game, I don't know that all of them will be able to keep the game or download the game again. And I think that's taking something away from people. I think because uh, I've I've been burnt well, by that and, by and, other and companies. That's one of those things where it's like, it's a question uh, of the you know what is the nature of the contract. Um, well, well, but is it legal or is it ethical? What is like, the nature of the contract, Bryce? Well, it's two words or less. <laughs> <laughs> you don't own it. You license everything, which Fail. is so that they more can than two do words. This. And the, and and that and that stinks. I've had that happen. There was a, a a card game that I really liked, Fairway Solitaire, that I had on my iPad forever. And it was an older game, and it was uh, I paid ninety nine cents for it. It's the exact same thing. They wanted to push you to the free to play one where they showed you ads and they had more microtransactions. Electronic Arts, uh, Electronic Arts delisted that game, the free one that I had, and I couldn't re-download it. And um, they took that away from me. I paid for that game. I would like to have my game back, please. And thank you. Hmm. Uh, well, furthermore, and, and, I would like to point out that Sonny McBlack is in our chat room, Mr. very Black. drunk uh, on Grappa from Italy. So thank you. <laughs> All right. I, I, I do feel like uh, that would be a fun thing to explore later on is because we're getting, drunk getting in Italy? into the, the, the era of um, or the issue of abandonware. And there's the, the legal distinction of like, no, you don't own the copyright of whatever. It's like, yeah, but the company doesn't exist. The software, you know, is, prove some damages, I, buddy. I want to experience it again. It's like, right. well, cool. Then maybe make it again, you know? And it's like, it, I don't know. It, I, oh, I'll, I'll give you a good button on this. Apparently, uh, you know, what's still popping in the abandonware circles. What? Pets. Pets. You remember pets. P E T Z. No. Oh, this is like oh my god. So Pets was like the, I mean, it was the the proto Nintendo dogs. It was, um, oh, you you could uh, raise a little cat or a dog or various types of animals on your computer, and because this was the late '90s and it was made for the worst computers of that time, it just runs on everything now. Got it. Um, and so so people have. Uh, a little community where they like keep it active the file uh, actually this is a good point the, the, this game is built in such a way that you can continue to do this you can share your pets you could send them to play dates on other computers um yeah uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, similarly no there, so. there's um stuff that gets lost in the rabbit hole um uh, there are movies where literally nobody knows who owns the copyright to them and as a result they are not public domain uh right. but you but can't they even can't you literally just can't get them. Yeah. But I, I also think that's, oh man, we're, we're going down. The yeah, we're right. right. Uh, there is a rabbit hole. Let's follow it up later on. Uh, 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 my pick they, is oh, the going Ur- down. The, going down a rabbit hole is terrible for a pet. Yeah. Unless it's a rabbit. Mm. Rub that thumb. Okay. Mm. We don't. Uh, my, my pick is the Urquan masters, which is a, 
uh, I believe, just a free download that is a recreation of Star Control 2. It's quite good. Uh, that's an cool. abandoned wear thing. Mm. It's, it's, it's a good game. Nice. Uh, I'll, I'll pick pets. I'll, I'll make sure the link in the bio or the, our link in the show notes is this master post. But someone had a great master post of like, here, you can download pets. Here's an all in one that like gives you all the modern day upgrades and fan patches and stuff. Um, and it is abandoned. It's also abandoned where. So I'll, I'll have the link to that uh, in the show notes. But yeah, pets. Awesome. Uh, my pick is. Oh, wait, no, I already picked yeah, TV Funhouse. Yep. TV Funhouse. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, the version of Song of the South that Walt only showed at parties. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Oh, boy, howdy. <laughs> well, uh, uh, we're going to not. We'll go. I'm going to. Well, I'm going to go east, but uh, uh, we're definitely not going south. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the After Things program. No, we went south at the end there. Uh, <laughs> this has been the After Things program for Brian and Justin. I've been Brian. This has been After. Killed it. Flawless victory. Professional podcaster, Bryce Castillo. Um, oh. All right, good uh, show, everybody. friend of mine, um, uh, the medical story I was telling earlier, somebody called twice, so I'm going to run off and yeah, go for it. talk to that person. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We will be back uh, tonight. We got marbles this evening. Make sure you check it out. Uh, we might have a stream over the weekend, and then we'll be back on Monday with Cord Killers. Hope you guys are having a great uh, start to your weekend. Enjoy it, TGIF. Bye!